Howdy folks and welcome to a special edition of World of Warships with the Rear Admiral Jingles and when you've seen the content of today's video I encourage you to interpret the use of the word special in whatever manner you deem fit. Today's first battle was submitted by Drakenefell. You may already know of his superbly detailed and informative naval history videos but well there's none of that today. This battle took place during a recent Mikasa event in World of Warships where everybody was playing rental Mikasas, and much fun was had. And much fun is going to be had in this battle, although probably not for the reasons that you're expecting. If you're looking at that mini-map and thinking those spawn locations look a little too close for comfort, you're absolutely right. You see, when a friendly ship spawns on top of another friendly ship, they simply jump out of the water. But when a friendly ship spawns on top of an enemy ship, uh, this happens. I'm not entirely sure what's causing this. I took a clip of this and stuck it on the World of Warships community contributor discord um, and the general reply was oh it's that old bug again but this is the first time I've ever seen it and hopefully it's the first time most of you have seen this happening as well because witnessing something like this for the first time is an experience that deserves to be shared. Now I did say that Drakenefell submitted this replay and you've doubtless noticed by now that this is not actually him. But he did collect a whole bunch of replays from this battle and send them in. Okay, so where is he then, Jingles? Good question. Glad you asked. He's up here. What? Don't look at me like that. Where else would you expect to find a battleship in a game of World of Warships? In fact, if you pay close attention, you'll notice that none of the surviving ships in this battle are actually in the water. They're all decorating the slopes of this island. But Jingles, which team won? Really? <laughs> <laughs> you think that's what's important here? I don't know. You really need to get out more. Clearly there are only two important things to take away from this battle. First, go home wargaming, you're drunk. And secondly, everyone involved got their five minutes of fame on YouTube. What's that? This is only two and a half minutes. Next up tier 10 clan battle. My apologies by the way to the cool dwarf in the Smolensk who sent these two replays in and while your 237,000 damage was mightily impressive especially considering there were only seven enemies available to farm damage from it just wasn't very exciting to watch. Fortunately the second replay from the same battle that he sent in from Fargangru here in the Des Moines absolutely was. Fargangru is a funny fucker. The first thing he says there in chat is that he's going to fondle him some double D's. Now it's entirely possible he's talking about boobies, but, well, given that he's in a radar cruiser, it's more likely that he means destroyers. It turns out that Fargangru is actually quite infamous amongst his clan mates for clapping lollies. <laughs> and he does in fact confirm in chat that he is going to, and I quote, clap them lollyboat cheeks. <laughs> I don't love it when you meet a player who enjoys his work. <laughs> anyway, sadly for... I'm sorry, I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> all, all of those poor defenceless underage boats. <laughs> well, anyway, um, sadly for Fog and Gru, uh, he's not going to realise his ambition <laughs> to, <laughs> to clap them lollyboat cheeks. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to do myself an injury here. <laughs> Right, okay. Uh, I've got it under control. <laughs> oh god, I haven't. <laughs> okay, right. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, where were we? Oh yes, clapping lollies. Actually, no. Um, Fargangru is going to be denied his ambition in this particular battle. He's going to get real close to giving the bum cheeks of the enemy gearing the damn good slapping that it so richly deserves, but he's going to be frustrated in his ambitions by the enemy Stalingrad. And there's the gearing, its bum cheeks so tantalisingly near, and yet at the same time so incredibly far. 
But the Stalingrad has popped up, and with the cry of Nay, Fog and Grew, there shall be no lollyboat bum cheap clapping on my watch, he basically spoils all of the fun. Now, just so we're absolutely clear, Fog and Grew knew that the Stalingrad was there. He also knew that the gearing was there. But the reason he's stuck in this position, well, there are a couple of reasons he's stuck in this position. First, he's a radar cruiser, and it's important that he dominates the middle of the map for radar coverage. Secondly, he's denying this cap. And thirdly, if he was to try to back up and get out of there, the Venezia up to the northwest has been tearing chunks out of him. So he's here to stay. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a huge amount of health left, and how long he stays here is going to depend entirely on how he deals with that Stalingrad. If there are going to be any lollyboat bum cheeks clapped today, that Stalingrad's going to have to die first. But, well, it's a Stalingrad. Fargangru, how are you going to deal with the Stalingrad? Well, Fargangru has a plan. It's a very simple plan, but it's remarkably effective. You might think you know what his plan is, but it is not to simply sit here chipping away at the Stalingrad's bows, because that's going to take all day. They're almost certainly already saturated. He's going for the Stalingrad's turrets. He just knocked out the second turret. You can see that it's not pointing in the same direction as the turret at the front, and he keeps pumping shots into it in an effort to knock it out and disable it permanently. You see how the front turret is rotating, but the second turret isn't? There's plenty more where this one came from. Once again, pumping shots into the bows. Okay, the second turret has just repaired. Hey, Mr. Stalingrad, that's a nice second turret you've got. It would be a real shame if somebody was to knock it out again. Oops. Keeps trying to do the same thing to the front turret, but no luck so far. However, keep trying. Eventually, some of that shit that you've thrown at the wall it's probably going to stick. You know that gearing on the other side of the arm is sweating bullets right now as well. He's got both hands on his bum cheeks and his butthole puckered tight. Bugger off, Fog and Grew, he's saying. These bum cheeks are not for clapping. We're, we're going to see about that. But first, of course, the Stalingrad. So, turrets have now been knocked out. Twice. And it looks like his second turret has been repaired. It's rotating in sync with the front turrets, and both guns have just fired and failed to do anything, and oh, isn't that a shame. Now you're on fire. Except there's a distinct lack of burning going on over there. He has just trolled the Stalingrad into using his damage control, and now he has permanently disabled the second turret. It would be a real shame if somebody was to knock out your front turret too. But hang on, Jingles, damage control won't repair a permanently disabled turret. No, you're right, but it'll stop him from repairing the front turret that he just knocked out after trolling him into using his damage control. So now there is absolutely nothing other than concentrating his secondaries on him that the Stalingrad can do while he waits out the repair of his front turret. He's already kissed the second turret goodbye. That's not coming back for the remainder of this battle. Fargan Groove Call still pumping further shots into the front turret, which looks like it has just been repaired. Um, just in time to knock it out again. <laughs> yes. I wonder how this Stalingrad is feeling about today's World of Warships experience. <laughs> uh oh. Shots coming from across the map. That's an enemy Kremlin. Oh no. Can he knock that turret out again? Actually, you know what? He doesn't need to. Now he can sink him. And then he can clap some lollyboat bum cheeks. Oh, so near and so tantalizingly far. Unfortunately, it's at this point that the enemy Kremlin shoots from the other side of the map, and no lollyboat bum cheeks were harmed during the making of this segment of today's video. In the final segment of today's video, we have a Triple Venezia division from Flambas, Trenlas, and Rogue Monk, in what is, quite frankly, a sickening display of an abusive game mechanics, and they should all have their accounts suspended at once for being very naughty boys. Oh yeah, what's this all about then, Jingles? Well, I'm reluctant to describe it in case anybody tries to copy this tactic. And I, of course, catch the blame for it, but the thing is, as an Italian cruiser, the Venezia has access to a unique gimmick. Full-speed smokescreen. 
unlike everyone else's smoke screens, where you must slow down to a quarter throttle in order to stay concealed within the smoke while it's busy generating, in an Italian cruiser you can quite merrily chug along at full speed and still stay concealed within the smoke for its duration. The only issue? Well, actually there are two issues. The first is that the smoke only lasts for 40 seconds, so think of it as a get-out-of-jail-free card. The second issue is that the Venezia is a honking great big heavy cruiser and not a small and stealthy destroyer. And it has a honking great big heavy cruiser's firing penalty when shooting from within a smoke screen. And this is something that catches out an awful lot of novice Italian cruiser captains. They get spotted, they pop their smoke, they think, haha, you can't see me, and that's true, until they fire their guns, and then suddenly they can be seen from low Earth orbit. You see, it turns out smoke screens don't actually make your ship invisible. You still have to be, you know, subtle about it. So, the first problem, the fact that the smoke generator only lasts 40 seconds, can be dealt with simply by cramming in as many smoke generators as possible. In this case, three of them. And the second problem, the fact that you're going to be seen from umpteen kilometres away, regardless of whether you're in a smoke screen or not, if you fire your guns, can be dealt with by the simple expedient of, um, well, not firing your guns. Mm, yeah, yeah. It, it, it sounds so simple when I put it like that, and yet so many Italian cruiser captains just don't seem to get it. Well, anyway, first things first, we're going to have to deal with that pesky Smolensk. Luckily, the Smolensk has also forgotten that he's not a destroyer, and they've just run into the range of his smoke firing penalty, so yeah. Well, okay, so much for the Smolensk. That's a very, very nice smoke screen you just dropped there, Mr. Smolensk. It lasts an awful lot longer than our 40 second smoke, so I think we'll use it. Oh look, predictable torpedoes are predictable and successfully avoided. But the plan for these filthy reprobates is not to simply sit inside the smoke screen dropped by the Smolensk, because that wouldn't work for them in the same way it didn't work for the Smolensk. The enemy battleships on the other side of that smoke screen are too close. If they start shooting from within that smoke screen, they're going to be seen, they're going to get shot at. And those are some very big and nasty battleships. They're going to power right on through. Trenlas has just popped his first charge of high-speed smoke. And from this moment on, they're rigging for silent running, torpedoes only, no guns. And yes, you did just see those torpedoes pass right through the bows of Rogue Monks Venezia. Uh, they armed after they'd already passed through the bows. They shouldn't have been able to pass through the bows, but pff, welcome to World of Warships. It looks like Trenlas's smoke has just expired. Flambas, your turn. And still travelling in excess of 35 knots, and still unspotted, they power on through. Now, I seriously don't recommend you try this at home, kids. The Venezia is a very, very good ship, but it has next to zero utility. It doesn't have hydro, and under most circumstances, if the enemy team were to spot an extremely angry-looking smoke screen chugging across the map at 36 knots, they're going to fire every torpedo they have into it, and without hydro, you're probably going to run into most of them at an average combined speed of something in the region of 100 knots, uh, which will prove to be extremely difficult to avoid, and probably you won't have much fun. But, under these precise circumstances, there are no torpedoes for them to worry about. They've killed the Smolensk. There's no destroyer over here, just two battleships, a Yamato and a Borgoyne. And they can still see them to target them with torpedoes because, well, the Yamato and the Borgoyne are busy shitting their pants and desperately pumping shots into the smoke, desperately trying to hit something, anything, in order to stave off their inevitable demise. And, of course, battleships have even bigger smoke-firing penalties than Venezia's. Now that all of their torpedoes are on cooldown and the Yamato has just fired and missed, it's time to start farming in with the ever-reliable semi-armor-piercing ammunition. And the Yamato is probably going to hurt them when his guns reload, but in the time that takes, three Venezias can do an awful lot of damage at this kind of range. Is the Yamato going to survive long enough to fire? Oh, he did! But Rogue Monkey knew that he was targeted, he was already angling away, and he didn't actually take much damage from that at all. And that's pretty much it for the Yamato. Flambas claims the kill, 
and with Luigi Sansonetti as the captain, that activates the Triumphant Hall talent, which extends the range of the Venezia's guns by a further 8%, and now it's the turn of the Borgoyne, who is probably coming to the conclusion that his main battery reload booster isn't going to last long enough to get him out of this mess, and is almost certainly wishing that he would had instead diverted around the other side of the island and just used his engine boost to get the fuck out of here. So many wrong decisions, so many regrets, so little time. You could be forgiven for thinking that under most circumstances, a Yamato, a Bourgogne and a Smolensk against three Venezias would be a fairly even fight. And under most circumstances, you'd be absolutely right. But this is looking kind of one-sided, really, isn't it? How do you deal with a smokescreen tearing towards you at 36 knots, spitting out torpedoes? Well, you fire your own torpedoes into the smokescreen. Well, yeah, but the Smolensk died. Well, okay, you use radar or hydro. Yeah, but the Yamato and the Borgoin don't have radar or hydro. Oh, yeah. Uh, turn around and run the fuck away? <laughs> well, the Borgoin did. But all it really succeeded in doing was delaying the inevitable. All right, Rogue Monkey has taken a bit of a spanking there, but he's not dead. And the Yamato, the Borgoyne, and the Smolensk kind of are. And the three enemies didn't really do anything particularly wrong there. Okay, the Smolensk kind of screwed up a bit by forgetting to take into account his smoke firing penalty. But that one mistake hardly seems to justify a three-for-nothing win. And yet, well, how do you deal with it? Okay, they're attracting fire from the other side of the map. Enemy Venezia. Uh, Trend last, I believe. You were the first one to use the smoke. It's time to rinse, repeat, and do it all again. But hang on a minute, Jingles. They're firing from within the smoke screen. And yet they're not being spotted. And yes, there goes the desperate resistance talent as well. So all of Flambass's consumables are now going to last 10% longer, which is quite handy, really, because he's going to be the next one to use the smoke. The thing is, yes, they can fire from within the smoke and not be detected, as long as anybody who could possibly see them is outside of the range of the smoke firing penalty. So, Italian cruiser captains, top tip, learn what your smoke firing penalty is. These guys did, and, well, it seems to be working out quite well for them, doesn't it? Of course, I should also uh, be quick to point out that any other abuses of the Italian full-speed smokescreen mechanic that you've seen demonstrated in this video are entirely the responsibility of the dirty little cheating scumbags responsible, and uh, the mighty jingles and Salt Mines Incorporated accepts no responsibility or indemnity for any damage inflicted on your own ships should you try to replicate this tactic in your own battles. Personally, all I can say is I hope that Wargaming clamp down hard on these three little scrope bags and their flagrant abuse of the Italian high-speed smokescreen mechanic, and I can only hope that as a result of this video, all three of these very naughty boys have their World of Warships accounts suspended permanently, or at the very least, perhaps we can turn them over to Fargengrew in the Des Moines, so that all of their butt cheeks can get the clapping that they so richly deserve. How did, how did that sound? Have I... My ass is covered, yeah? Yeah? Okay, good, thanks. Right, well, I think we're good. <laughs> and remember, kids, don't try this at home. Or if you do and it doesn't work, don't come crying to me. I've washed my hands of the matter. I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.